with Mike from MCM Agency and I'm going to attempt to do a full setup uh, of Facebook ads in 10 minutes, I'm going to get myself. Okay, first we need to start with, uh, no, matter, no matter which business uh, you have, uh, you're going to need to start with who's your ideal customer, right? Now you probably have an idea in your head, that's not good enough, you need to find real data. So I use this document, uh, I will link it below. and. It's essentially going to outline a few things and it's going to allow us to basically conduct some research and we can use various tools for that or we can do it manually or we can do it through customer surveys. Um, so let's start with basics. We have, first of all, a summary uh, of what our ICP is. Now, it's really uh, important to understand that these words like ICP, ideal customer profile, avatar, persona, uh, there's other ones that people say. The real hierarchy of it is ICP, ideal customer profile, and that will be for each segment of market that you're going for. So for example, if you're a marketing agency that serves uh, direct to consumer e-commerce brands, that's one segment, so you have an ICP for that. And then you might serve, let's just say, coaches and uh, e-learning, usually fall on the same thing. So that's two completely different ICPs. And then within those will be various different personas that will allow you to uh, pick up different pockets of the market. Now, the ICP is very, very broad. The reason we use the ICP is it gives us um, information that we can put into things like Sales Navigator or uh, Lucia or Apollo or any of these other, or if we're just doing it manually, um, it gives us the basic details of what the account or company or organization looks like. And it also gives us a set of rules whereby if it doesn't meet this, then it's just a no. Because then that cuts down uh, prospecting time. Because there's a lot of companies that you get and it'll match everything, but then there'll be one thing that's out and you might think that it's not that important. You might be like, ah, okay, I'll still go for it and still go through all the research and then get all their details and then email them and call them and everything. And it turns out that they're not the right person to be speaking to or the right organization to be speaking to just because you didn't do that one exclusion. So let's run through what we have here. So this is for a marketing agency. Uh, we've got date created, we've got summary of everything, so you can just quickly look at this. So our primary ICP is a medium-sized uh, medium direct-to-consumer company in the e-commerce space. Their headquarters is located in North America, but they serve a global market. Their clients are regular consumers with a, high, with a higher than normal net worth. Uh, and I'll actually quantify that with 100k plus per year. See, the thing with the ICP is it's all about the numbers, because when you go to these platforms or when you're searching online, you need numbers. So. 100k plus, they're undergoing significant growth and are stuck at a scaling, uh, stuck at scaling any further without outside help. Their, uh, their typical annual revenue is over $700,000 per year. Uh, and that really should be 700,000 and 2 million. You need to give accurate. You, you can have things like, I would con very much consider putting in uh, an audience size for this, but with the tools that we use, it doesn't really make a difference when you have a rough estimate of what their um, uh, headcount is, which I'm just about to put in, and their revenue. So, uh, typical headcount. So this is the amount of people that work in the business. We're at five minutes already, because it's not gonna be 10 minutes. Uh, their typical headcount is uh, five, 25 people. And then I'll put in just a summary, definitely. No, if we already have marketing team in house, it's definite no. Uh, obviously, you can if you are a marketing agency with this, then obviously you can try and sell to people that have a marketing team and try and do a really good job of them getting rid of them. But good luck. Um, right, so that's our definite uh, no at the moment. Okay, so we have that. That's our summary. So how do we get there first? So we went through these questions. First, uh, main questions. Does this product satisfy a desire, need, or pain that the market currently has? The goal here is to dive into the deepest pain that we can pull from your market. Okay, this says SaaS. I don't know why. Yeah, the entire marketing and SaaS industries are consolidating. Okay, that's fine, yeah. Cool, right, so what we've noticed in research is that SaaS products are consolidating. Uh, and what I mean by that is they're bringing in, I mean, typically you'd have a MarTech stack, a marketing uh, stack of five, six, seven, eight, ten tools. But what companies are doing now is they're, they're bringing everything into one and they're consolidating. So there's a reason for that. Uh, one of them being uh, it's much better for the consumer. 
Uh, I would like to think that's the main reason. Uh, two, they can obviously charge more. Uh, and three, it basically allows everyone else to evolve as in competition. Uh, competition, Because there are some companies like, right off the top of my head, uh, Lemlist, that left a wide open gap in the market. And I can't even count the amount of companies that have just taken advantage of that. And they probably lost the majority market share for sure. And that was because they let you only they only let you attach one email account. So uh, the other, there's another software that came in um, last year or the year before. I think it was called Instantly, and you can basically attach 50 email addresses. And that was a massive pain point for people that were using Lemlist because people like to blast out thousands of emails a day, a day for some reason. I don't know why, but they do. Um, so anyway, uh, and now we have, I mean, even things like a prospecting tool like Apollo, you can attach as many emails as you want. HubSpot, you can attach more than one email for sure. I don't know how many, I think you have to maybe pay for more, but it's not very much. Uh, we definitely have three emails attached to our hotspot. Anyway, um, so we've identified that. Uh, so the goal here is to drive to the deepest pain in your market. This isn't the deepest pain. Uh, definitely not. It's more of an angle. Uh, this needs to be changed and updated. Uh, does, your, does your product satisfy, this will be service in this case, design, uh, satisfy a desire, need or pain? So this is just a need really. There's not, it, it, it's kind of a cross between all of them because it's really nice to have everything consolidated. Uh, they kind of need that because of price points. Because when you have like six different softwares, it's really expensive. When you have one, it might look expensive on the outside, like Passport, for example. But when you actually look at all the other tools, it's actually about the same price or less. Maybe not with Passport, but with most other ones. Um, and then pain because they have to switch keep, like all your like BDRs and SDRs and AEs. They've got to be switching through like six tools for sales. Anyway, um, right. Next question, we'll do these on quickly. At what point does the product serve the market? Uh, this is a total package solution. It's a full stack marketing agency. Is this product already proven to sell or are there similar products that have proven success? This is really important if you're selling a product or a new or a new service. A marketing agency, a full stack marketing agency isn't selling a new, anything new. Um, the way they package it, offer it and deliver it can be very, very new. Uh, they can add slight nuances to it, but it's not completely new, obviously. So. New products need to pay attention to this because this is important. Um, we put yes, it's proven. It's proven to sell. We've already sold our lar largest package. So we're talking about the actual price here, really. Uh, positioning, what I'm working on at the moment, as there are two piles we can go down. Okay, this is actually a document in, in a, I, I kind of just picked it out, but it's actually, kind of, it's actually hours. Oh, uh, go straight for the big sale or go on for smaller accounts, just like e uh, email marketing and then work up from there. Both have their upsides and down, which is true. So we're basically evaluating what has sold um, in terms of what sells in the, in the current market. And we know that because we're engulfed in it every day, all day in Slack groups and uh, Facebook groups and people on my Facebook. I know exactly what's happening in the market at any time because I'm in so many of these. I'll just show you my Slack now. It should actually pretty be on. Hopefully nothing sense to do. I mean, look, they're all marketing groups. So, um, yeah, if you're not in your industry, then like really in it, then you need to be. Because you, you need to be following trends, seeing what other people are doing. Um, and really having, having, having your finger on the pulse on that because uh, we have another company and we took our finger off the pulse for a couple of seconds and then AI come out of nowhere and now we have uh, changes to make. So as an example, a legit personal example. So, okay, uh, product breakdown and analysis. I'll put, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put this document at the end so we don't really need to go through it that much, but we break down the product. Now, if you, if you have a service, you have to, you don't have to. In my opinion, you, it, you need to productize it and give it a name. And that's going to be your offer. It's essentially your offer. What are you offering? Uh, and that's your product. It's got a price point. Now I know everyone's screaming value-based pricing. Yeah, okay, fair enough. We can tier, we can have tiers within those price within that pricing. But do you know how much easier it is to sell something that's uh, essentially you treat it as a product? This is the, this is what you get. This is the price for it. Does it make sense for you to have that financially? We know it makes financial sense for us because we created it. Um, if those conditions aren't met, then no. We carry on. Next person. It's very, very makes it very, very simple. There's none. There's none of this um, like renegotiating prices. Very rarely. Like we don't. We do obviously go outside of the products that we have services uh, to offer more because we can, and they're not a set. That's not a set amount. That is case by case. But the vast majority of the time, we're, we're using productized services. It makes everything a hundred times easier. You can even just put the price on your website so people. Just, People don't even bother contacting you if they because they know if you're like if you're premium if you're offering a premium service um, the price point's going to be higher than somebody that doesn't and it also eliminates the fact that if you are a marketing agency or you are a um, let's, let's say a brand owner uh, apparel brand owner and you're speaking with an agency 
you both know what the price is going to be. So if I was on the brand side, I'll, I'll be thinking, okay, this is the price. Now I want to see why it's that much because it's more than, uh, than other agencies and it's less than other agencies. So I want to see what I get for that. And that's where you have the demo call and everything like that. Now, when you don't have that price point on there, uh, what it leads to is prospects getting completely confused when you say $3,000 for something and they're expecting you to say 500. Uh, it completely eliminates uh, a waste, like time wastage of calls that you shouldn't even be on because a client's not qualified. And it also uh, helps with the client. If, they, if they're looking for an even more premium service, then they can just bypass you as well. So it's just a time saver. Like all this value-based pricing stuff is, yeah, okay, we are basing the, the, the cost of the product on value, of course, it doesn't have a monetary, it doesn't have a, a physical thing. There's no uh, cost of goods, as it, as it were. There's cost of labor, of course, but whatever you put that to, like whatever you cost yourself for labor is just literally just arbitrary number. It, makes, it doesn't matter for anything. I could um, I, I save my hourly rate $100,000 an hour. Prove me wrong. Like, it's not real. So, yeah, that's my take on, uh, yeah, that's my take on it. It is value-based pricing, but it's not value-based pricing per customer. It's value-based pricing on what you're giving to any customer. Now, I said there's tiers involved. There needs to be tiers involved because if you're handling, say, for example, uh, an email account that has 500,000 contacts, then there's a lot more work that goes into that manpower, like, like labor, um, that costs more. So there needs to be tiers within that. Um, email frequency is going to be much higher. The, just the managing the segmentation and strategy of that is a much longer process. So. That's where the tiers come in, obviously with ad spend on ads, it kind of comes in, but I, I, I personally think managing one, $1,000 isn't that much different to managing $20,000, we certainly honest with you. Um, okay, right, let's carry on. So, retail costs, we're at 20 minutes, great. Uh, retail costs, 3,000 to 10,000. Um, this is our base. Uh, this is our kind of top, but not really, because higher than that, but uh, special options, lower priced offerings. So we do have like, if somebody just wants one channel like the way that we operate our agency is we operate it as um we actually want the business to grow and we're not going to be able to do that by managing one channel as in one platform place like facebook we can make that channel really good for sure and if the other people involved are willing to work with us as in um follow the same strategy or route that's been decided between everybody then great but i have not that just doesn't happen uh and we've been doing this for a very long time, and I know it doesn't happen. So uh, we typically, yeah, we, we typically wouldn't. We we either take all the paid media or none of the paid media, pretty much. Um, there are different, there are circumstances that we will take. We will take one platform. Um, recent example, uh, we knew that we knew the agency doing the other. Uh, we, we knew the agency doing the other, one of the other platforms, so we work, we worked with them because there's no problem. We knew them like person, like uh, not personally, but they're in our network. Um, okay. Uh, what, where, when, why? Obviously, you know that. Okay. Now let's go to some fun stuff because it's really boring so far. It's not really boring. It's actually really. Uh, Got a lot of value here, but we're just kind of looking at a uh, word doc here. Market research steps. Okay, first we need to find out some competitors. Now, we put these. For marketing agencies, there's about 10,000 million per square foot in the entire world. So it's actually really impossible to do this for competitors. But we put HumanX because we like them and um, they do very similar things to us. Uh, we put Affluent Agency because we like the way they run in, in uh, certain aspects. We like the way the agency runs. I think put it that way. Um, and then these other two are just two other agencies that are similar to ours. What else we got here? Influencers. Right. Now there's a reason we're identifying these. I'm actually going to show you how to do this as well. It's pretty better. So we've got Harley T. I actually can't remember who that is. Obviously the big man Chase. Uh, Eugene Swartz. One of the, yeah, one of the best uh, advertisers in the world. Uh, we've got Ashton in there from Heeman. I don't even remember doing this, but that's funny. Um, yeah, we've got Chase and Ashton in there, but as uh, the main ones, to be honest, as influencers within our space, but then Ashton's not really an influencer in the space. He should be, but he's not, unfortunately. Uh, so we'll go with Chase and Eugene for these ones. Uh, books, these were, these are, um, uh, positioning, right, okay, yeah. So what you need to understand here is that I completely missed. Uh, I'm gonna slow this down now because it's just gonna be a long video. But it's going to be worth it, trust me. We're looking in the eyes of the ICP here. So, if I was a e-commerce brand doing up to two mil, I would be follow. I would definitely be following Chase, Ashton, Eugene, and the competitors. Bit doesn't really matter that much because we're only using that to for another reason. But influencers, yeah. If I was a, if I was a DTC brand, 
I 100% think of these people, uh, for sure. So books, it's the same thing. It's like, what, I mean, they're going to be looking at these books. Now, whether that be the CEO or whether it be the, the CMO, and I'm going to get to that in a second because there's a very, very weird misconception that every single business that you sell to has to be the owner. It doesn't at all. Absolutely not at all. Sorry. So let's pause there for a second and have a sip of water. Um, yeah, so it doesn't need to be the decision maker at all times. The key decision maker, what we call a champion, uh, will most likely be brought into the into the discussion at some point. But the initial point of contact um, is, is, is actually most of the time if you're going for brands that, uh, well, for us that can afford our services and that require a service at this level, they will it will be somebody like a CMO possibly or a COO in most cases that will actually will engage with first and then. Um, have discussions with them and then the CMO, uh, sorry, the uh, CEO, owner, director, whatever you call them, will then be involved afterwards, possibly, maybe more time to sign clients without the CEO even being involved. But yeah, just bear that in mind if you're an agency. I'm not really making this for agencies, but probably the vast majority of people watching it are going to be agencies, but it doesn't matter because I like making loom videos. Right, books. This is based on research that we found from our clients. Uh, we did a big uh, survey panel. <coughs> within a group that is half made up of D2C brands. Uh, that is the Triple Well Group on Slack. So shout out to them. Uh, amazing company, amazing product. Uh, if you haven't seen what they do, check them out for sure. Um, and let me know, because I've got a referral link and I make money off it, so. No, I'm joking, you can just sign up to them, I don't really care about that. Um, okay, so yeah, we, we just ask people. It's just it's, it's real research. You just ask people. You find the right groups and ask them what books they read. It's really simple. And these ones we've written here came up more than once, basically. Publications. Um, okay. Publications. Again, you can do this in a survey and get the answers straight from the horse's mouth. Now, I'm going to show you a tool that can do a lot of this for you. <laughs> my search is discount code. Oh, listen. Not the cheapskate of the marketing industry. Okay. My dashboard. Let's get this. It's wildly big. Okay. So what we have with SparkTora is we're able to search their database of audiences. Now, I'm led to believe it's predominantly made up of Twitter accounts. Um, well, the base audience is made up of that. Uh, I believe it's Twitter and um, I'm thinking YouTube. Um, yeah. Now, they just changed the API with uh, the time of recording of this with, uh, well, Twitter has, so I don't know if Spotify was affected by that. It doesn't seem like they have been, but most companies were. Anyway, so it still works. So what this allows you to do is we can look at my audience frequent, frequently talks about, my audience uses these words in their profile, my audience follows this social account, my audience frequently visits uh, the, web, the, the website and you type the website. My audience frequently uses the hashtag, uh, and then you can analyze a specific website or social account. So we're gonna get those in, that initial information from uh, usually competitors. Um, so if we're an agency, no, sorry, uh, I wouldn't do it like that at all. In the case of an agency, you would, or any service-based business pretty much, so any coaches, you would do it based on a larger competitor. So you, let's just put in it, I don't think there'll be an audience for this, let's just, there might be. No. They need to be quite big accounts, so, uh, let's just do Vayner Media. Well, that's got to be on there, surely. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so this now gives us loads of information on um, people that talk about Vayner Media. Now you want to try and get, you need to really think creatively with Spark Duo because there's a lot of audiences that aren't on here. So it might take a little bit of manual digging around first. So look at your competitors. If you're a D2C brand, um, then you're, yeah, you're looking at your competitors as well. So within this case, you're always looking at your competitors. Um, now, you're not always gonna find your competitors directly on here, or you're not gonna find what, exactly what you want, so you need to think creatively. So, I just thought creatively that, I thought VaynerMedia it is a massive marketing agency. Uh, not really very relevant to us, but similar people might follow it. Um, now, whether it's the right people, we don't know, but we can kind of gauge it. We've got real data and we can look through it. So let's just have a look through VaynerMedia. I've never done this before with VaynerMedia, but okay, it doesn't have a lot of information. So we've got uh, words in bios. 
Twelve percent of the audience they have has advertising in their bio. Seven point seven percent has digital media. Five point eight percent has manager production, media, media, vayner media agency. Yeah, so this is probably isn't the best audience for us because they're most likely people that. Um, well, I just know that Gary V's audience isn't the kind of people that we're going to be looking for uh, as a client. So in this case, I'll do. Let's just say we're looking for um, a fitness e-commerce client. We could put something like Gymshark. Because there's two reasons for this. One of them is to find actual social pages people are following. Um, and it's also to look at language that people are using. So people that talk about Gymshark, 25%, they follow Gymshark. She's not surprised. Uh, they follow uh, Nikki Blackata, I'm not sure who that is. Christine Guzman, not sure who that is, but it's like some kind of model. Steve Cook is a bodybuilder, I believe. In this country, uh, uh, Bodybuilding.com. Uh, don't know who any of these people are, but I'm guessing they're all fitness models of some kind. So we can see that. That's what the audience of Gymshark is looking at. Uh, websites. We can see what web website, websites are going on. Now, what we can do from here to bring this back to our ICP is um for example we can look at podcasts now people that listen to people that like gymshark are going to be potentially our customers as well if we were a coach or sorry if we were a d2c brand that sold fitness clothes so it works a lot better in that sense when it comes to b2b especially with like agencies this is really hard to do uh, especially with especially with spark tomorrow um it works really really well for d2c brands because Gymshark, we can essentially find a brand that will have basically exactly the same audience as ours. So if we were a fitness brand that sold gym wear, like active wear, then we could type in Gymshark and the vast majority of these people will have the same interest and stuff like that. So it's very, so much easier to do it like that. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it at that, but you essentially get YouTube, like what YouTube channels are looking at, what Reddit accounts are looking at. Now I'm going to use this one now. So, and press. ESPN, BBC Breaking News, Lab Bible, New York Times, and MTV, E, Vogue. Vogue comes up in every single audio, every single time I run a search on this. No matter what niche, Vogue is just always in there. Um, right, okay, so typically what I'll do here is I will, whoops, uh, get the publications and put those from Spark to Row. Uh, books, I will, uh, I'll do through either uh, surveys or in the case of um, a marketing agency, you can kind of work it out. Uh, but in this case, we did actually do a customer survey, and then influencers and competitors. Yeah, I mean, we know that already. So um, publications we can get from Spark to Row, which is good. Uh, and now we want to do a little bit more in-depth research. So I would um, actually not at this point. We'll keep Spark to Row open and finish this document. So um, yeah, they're just some useful bits of information that we're going to use later on. Don't spend too much time on this. Not 34 minutes. No, you, will have to spend, you will have to spend time on this because you do it once and then that's kind of it for a while and then you reiterate it a little bit more and you, you, like, you don't have to do the whole process again, if that makes sense. So, right, titles, director, managing director, CEO, CMO, marketing director, owner, co-owner, head of e-commerce. Uh, right, finals, opening avatar. So we've put it Gloria, she's 40 years old. And by the way, we base a lot of this information on current customers. That's really important to note, which I completely forgot. You can do uh, panel surveys of uh, companies that are doing this that you don't work with or even know, but you can just ask your clients this as well. Uh, it's pretty actually better information. Um, so we know, I mean, from our client base, we know the age and their hobbies, and we know all this just from working with very, very similar people for a very, very long time. Now, I think this is due to the fact that our personalities. Um, click well um, I don't know but I mean this ICP has basically been my personal one for since I started media buying over six years ago so I've always worked, worked I think my first client was same age and, and did like all of this stuff same exactly the same stuff and then when I go back through it again uh, over a hundred clients later it's still the same and that's not uh, on purpose that's just uh, they're the people I work well with and they are the people that um, I can typically get good results for that need my services and I like to be very uh, communic uh, communicative with clients and be very um, like hands on with them even though I might not necessarily bring their ads or anything um, I'll still be in very close contact with them I'll still be point A contact even if even though I'm running even though I'm running at an exec level that doesn't matter I don't care I'll still speak to them 
So, uh, this is the boil, the boil down of everything. So we have Gloria, who's 40, she's a female. She, her hobbies are business, coaching, and teaching. I like Gloria, they're my hobbies as well, apart from the big ones. Uh, living a free life, yep. Making money, fair enough. Loves the product they sell, so really into, if they're a coach as well, just really, really, really into that. So if they're a fitness coach, they're just obsessed with fitness. If they're a business coach, coach they're obsessed with business. Like, when you get into this online world and you're not obsessed with what you're actually doing, then I think you're doing the wrong thing. Uh, just to understand that in there for the people that start agencies that don't even like marketing. Um, then we have traveling, luxury goods, uh, household income, over a million. Uh, million. Uh, political views and AI, I don't like to talk about anything. Um, now, we use Apollo for prospecting. So we can now punch this information into a tool called Apollo. Please know everything up. Cool. Right behind search. And we can then do, well, we'll be people at this point. And then we can just push this information in, the exact information that we've written out in here. And we can do a search. But the thing we're missing is the personas. So, this is a persona. And this is Gloria, by the way. <laughs> Doesn't look very friendly, or like Gordon. Okay, um, so this is um, a, a modified version of uh, Human X's, I'll have to give them credit for this, uh, Empathy Map. I built on it a little bit more to suit how I like it. Uh, I added in some extra bits on the side, but it's pretty much the same. So I look back to the actual ICP, which is the part where you can just punch into Apollo and the majority of the company is gonna be like within, um, Sorry, the majority of the companies are going to be the kind of companies you're going to, you're going to want to work with. So that's what you're getting from the ICP. Now, when you're create, creating separate uh, personas, that then allows you to bring in and hone in on specific uh, segments of the market. So not every woman called Gloria, age 40, that really likes business is going to be our perfect client, obviously. <laughs> um, but it gives us that rough bit. Um, so we need to break them down into Personas. Now, this is our overall persona for a DC uh, e-commerce brand. So here we go into a little bit, little bit more detail. So the organization has five to 20 people in. The revenue is between 700,000 and 2 million. This is their tech stat. Shopify, Clavio, Google Tag Manager. Um, and then we check if they're running ads as well. If they are, then good. Uh, that'll be on Facebook and TikTok, we can check. Um, and then we've got our do not use clause. Do not use if they have an in-house marketing team. Just a click. Okay, so now we are going into some deep psychology stuff where I think a lot of people overlook this and it's probably the most important part of it. And um, I'll, put, I'll just say this right now. Guessing this doesn't work. I don't care how much you meditate on it or like how much your whole team gets together and thinks about it. It's not gonna be 100% correct. You need to have full on data that proves that this is what's happening. So we need to know what they're thinking, what they're seeing, what they're hearing, what they're saying, and what they're feeling as the basics. Then I have on the right, uh, I boil it down a little bit more into uh, wants, fears and motivations, pain points, gains, uh, and habit, uh, habits and beliefs. So how do we get this information? Okay, bad news. You can have to manually go through a lot of stuff. Because one, it's going to give you a really, in, really personal and in-depth knowledge of the person that you're trying to speak to, uh, because they are a person, not a just an inbox that you send a thousand emails to, um, in order to effectively outreach to people. Uh, we don't even automate our email sequences anymore. We have some two email follow-ups sometimes uh, on tier three accounts. Now, tier three account, tier, uh, tier three accounts are. Uh, clients that we do want to work with, but they're not top of our priority list. So they might go through an automation that has like three really short follow-ups just to save us a bit of time, but the rest of it's all manual. All manual emails, all manual phone, uh, phone calls, all manual DMs, all completely personalized based on this information. Um, so for people getting instantly to blast out 10,000 emails a day, I do not know what you're trying, I don't know what you're doing or selling, but it doesn't work if you want to charge a premium price for a premium service. Now, fair enough, if you're offering a really bad service and it's cheap, then go for it, knock yourself out, see how far you get. But, um, yeah, so this information we've gotten from various sources. Now, I mentioned Reddit earlier, so let's go to appified.com, free account we get here, go into the console, and then I think I've got one loaded up already actually for Reddit, and then go into store, if we go Reddit. 
There are paid ones and there are free ones. But uh, the only one that I've seen that I wanted to pay for was a um, oh uh, Amazon review scraper. But you can do that for free. So don't don't, don't pay for it. I'll tell you how to do it for free in a second. You need to get I'll tell you right now. You need to get uh, no, that's my phone dialer. Um, I don't have any more. There's an app that allows you to download all of the, um, not an app, an extension, Chrome extension that allows you to download all the reviews for a product. You can then take those and put them into uh, ChatGPT or any other LLM that you use and analyze them that way. And then you bypass any costs involved apart from the minute cost of using an LLM. So, uh, Reddit Scraper. Is this one that I used before? Hopefully there's some other stuff in there still. Pasta pepperoni. Okay, let's just go with that. So here, you would jump back to Spark Duo, and you would grab 40%. They're talking about the actual brand name, so I put Jim, oh, Jim Snark as well, so I definitely wouldn't go with that. Be a visionary, okay. Right, Lulu Lemon. I don't even know what that is, so let's do that. Uh, let's do copy link address. So let me put that in here. Reddit, to run this out to you need to purchase it. Okay, fine, I'll just go grab the other one then. There you go. Okay. But the video's gonna be ruined if they if you have to pay for this now. It'll be about two days ago and it's free. Come on. Cool. Yeah, it's got my old search in there. So uh, rep ladies, fashion reps and handbags. Obviously I'll do research for a fashion brand. Um, and these came up within Spark Toro and throughout uh, manual research. I'm not gonna go into every kind of research you can do because I'll be here all day. But just look at it as manual research, research you can get from Spark Toro, then find the YouTube accounts and go through all the comments, uh, go through all the relevant YouTube accounts and go through all the comments and literally copy and paste them into a document. Uh, find books that uh, are related to, say for example, if you are uh, if you want to reach out to coaches, fitness coaches, then look at fitness, review, uh, fitness books and get all the reviews from there and then analyze those reviews afterwards. So think a little bit outside the box on that. Um, Let's think of a weird one uh, I've done before. Um, okay, we had, we had a chess set. Uh, this is an old client of mine. Um, and the product was a chess set. But it was more like a interior design piece. If you had to play chess on it, you'd be a bit weird. It looked really, really nice. Um, so it was a really, really unique product. And through the research that I found and took the time to do, um, found out that the vast majority of people bought that product just for the interior. Uh, design aspect of it, nothing to do with actually playing chess. So you find out through those various avenues, you can have tools for it. We have another tool called Brand24 that we use. I won't go into that now, this video is too long already. I'm gonna keep on doing an hour. So we put all the uh, things in here and then we run it and then we get a CSV and we basically have all the comments from all three of these subreddits. Now you can obviously limit it because the free version you don't get unlimited outputs. Um, so I, did, I put that, yeah, I did just the defaults, I'll keep on, uh, and I'll definitely do, so. Well, you need to have search for comments turned on. I think that actually is default turned off, so I definitely turn that on. Um, and then you're gonna get a whole list of comments from people talking within these subreddits. Now, I would advise the first time you do this to go to these subreddits and just look through them, because I find it very interesting when it's a industry that I haven't worked in, haven't done that much work in, uh, I would say an industry that haven't worked in, I can't think, really think of one. Um, but yeah, if I, haven't, if I haven't had that many clients within that industry, then I would go in manually and at least spend half an hour reading through manually and then scrape the data afterwards. So then you get the first initial touch. Right, what happens after you get, you're going to download a big CSV with this and then you can either run this through AI, um, depending on which what you're using. Uh, the free G chat GPT is now capped to a certain amount of words, so it doesn't really work because you need to analyze a lot of words. Um, I'm using at the moment, uh, where is it? Right Sonic. It's really good for this kind of stuff. Actually, to be fair, it's gonna, it's gonna break. It always breaks. It's gonna break. So we'll leave. Oh, oh I nearly made it. Oh, don't wanna do that. Um, okay. So I suggest for a brand owner, you don't need to do this very often. So you can get a free trial of Monkey Learn. And Monkey Learn is. Um, uh, essentially a text analyzer. So we can put it through NPS. Uh, there are a lot of other templates we can put it through that I don't think we actually have on here. Okay, boilerplate extraction, okay, so coding. Um, 
email cleaner, email, email extractor. So you have like a bunch of text, but this has nothing to do with what we're talking about, it doesn't matter. Uh, sentiment for a hotel, randomly. You can extract keywords, location. These are all rubbish templates, and this is why this software doesn't do very well. This software's gonna die very, very quickly because they're not, they're not even bothering to update it. I think, I think they know they're gonna lose to like AI, so they've just given up. Um, so, anyway, uh, do the NPS analysis. Okay, my trial's run out. We won't even let me do it, even I've still got a trial. Uh, keyword sentiment analysis, can we do that? No, okay. You put all the, all of the text in here, and it analyzes it for you. So we get the sentiment, uh, which is obviously good, bad, or neutral. And then we get a word cloud, which is really good. Uh, there's another tool that I've just remembered, uh, Nicole from Geek Hub uh, shared. I should have definitely saved that. I definitely did, but I can't remember what it's called. Oh, there you go, I don't mind that, bang. Yeah, this is cool. So you can put that in there. That's good. That's the first one you said. Um, so yeah, this gives you a mind map, which is awesome. So Lulu Lemon, talk about Jim, Jim Snark, and then a load of other stuff that uh, the people that like this. We also look up this other stuff as well, uh, which is great. We're, we're learning who these people are, what they like, what they look at, how they talk. Um, the whole reason we're doing this is because we need to get inside the person's head that we're selling to. Not guess, because it's always wrong, or it's, it's never 100%. When you do it this way, it's always 100%, because these are real people talking about what we're looking what we're looking for, as in the brand, or our brand, company, or whatever you want to say. Um, and it's real data, so use this to then go back into your map and fill out these sections. So this is what they're thinking. They don't trust agencies. Well, I know that is a massive one, because I did a survey in, in, in the Triple L Slack group, uh, I think I had 15 people answering, every single one of them said they don't trust agencies. 100%. 100% said they did, don't, didn't trust agencies. We all know why that is. Um, anyone, anyone watching this video will know why that is. Uh, I'm not going to go into it because it, it, I get very passionate about it. And um, I will just leave it at that. But that's what they think. So if you are an agency owner watching this, that is what they think. So just so you know. Um, 100%. Because I've literally carried out first-hand research for people, from people that I don't even know. It was a, like a blind survey. Um, so, yeah. Keep that in mind when you deliver your services next, please. Uh, or even think about getting into the industry. Right, commonly used phrases. This is really, really good for ad copy. And then, obviously, all of this data is good for ad copy. Once you've got all this filled out, then we can now move on to hook discovery angles. So we can put in the sentiment. So let's just do one really quickly. They don't trust the agency. Right, appeal. We're going to be looking at this little thing down here. Appeal. Desperate, holy sort, genuine desire, indefinite, not warranted. So this is going to be 100% going to be desperate. Where else can I get this? <sighs> Nearly not wanted nowadays, but put two on that. Clarity, how much will I understand this? Now this is going to, going to completely depend on the, the client because some clients know a lot, some clients don't. So with this, I would probably put a D2C brand as either a four or a five. They know a lot about this. Um, and then um, we have motivation. How much will I do to get this? Now this is uh, hard to gauge. So you need to gauge it from what you've seen from your research. From the research that I do, it's about a two or a one. Like it gives us 13 as a score. Anything above a 10 we'll use. Uh, go to our hook generator. We're gonna use the agency doesn't trust me as our sentiment. And we're gonna go, no matter what I do, and these are going to be our hooks. So, so if we are advertising as the agency, uh, we can put here, no matter what I do, um, businesses, oh wait, hold on, this is the sentiment. Um, businesses don't trust agencies. Okay, right. Pain alignment, obvious, uh, yes question. Are you feeling tired? Are you feeling like no matter what you do, you can't grow your business? So this one's gonna be, are you feeling like no matter what you do, you can't find an agency or freelancer, you're not getting out of this either, uh, that I can trust. There you go, that's a nice hook for you. Desire for you to stay. Uh, how, would you how would you like to know the exact steps in order to take 
uh, to get your business over the hump and finally make the money you deserve. So, how would you like to know the exact steps to take in order to get to find an agency Find an agency you can fully trust. Oopsie. Agency you can fully trust and finally make the money you deserve. Uh, first person direct, what do I have to do to finally grow in business and make what I deserve? So, what do I have to do to, to find an agency I can trust and get the services? and have the services promised to me delivered. It's not really wrong. Because this is a massive thing, by the way, for all your uh, agencies and freelancers watching. Stop promising stuff you can't do, please. Okay, if you're wondering what on earth you have to do to grow your business and make money you deserve, then you've stumbled across the right ad. I like this one, it's kind of funny. Um, if, you know, if, you, uh, if you're wondering what on earth you have to do to Find an agency you can actually trust. Are you stumbling across the right ad? Bang, I use actually. Pretty good. So now you've got your hooks, and then you can write your copy based off of whatever framework you like writing off of, PAS, uh, ADA, whatever, or whatever style you use. And you use the information, and this is really important, we didn't just do this information for no reason. We did this information to understand how our customers think and talk. So we write our copy in the exact same way so they relate to it. We uh, have our creative aligned with how they're thinking. Uh, we might use text overlay or, or anything that aligns with how or what we have identified, we use. We don't just start now being like, yeah, everyone trusts agencies and we're the best one and we offer no guarantee, we have no experience and we cost $200,000 to do Facebook ads with a $1,000 budget for you and we also take 90% uh, ROAS in your copy. Oh, sorry, Roma's incentive. Um, so yeah, that's it. Research, talk the way that, that they need to speak, that, uh, that your customer needs to speak. I really, really apologize to absolutely nobody. Um, Gloria over here. <laughs> she didn't turn out too well. I saw the stress the agency's been putting her through. Right, okay, that's, an, that's it for me, guys. I apologize for that long video. I hope that really helps. Uh, agencies, if you're watching, cool. Uh, brands, if you're watching, this can really help you in the early stages of your ads. I highly suggest you just download the video and go through it because that is thousands of dollars worth of training that I just condensed into an hour long video. Um, I will credit Human X for providing a little bit of this. It's not exactly how they do it, so it's not copying. Uh, I've added to this a lot more. Um, and to find these people, to, to finish off, you're going to need a prospecting tool like Apollo uh, or Lucia. It's cheap, uh, cheap, more expensive. Apollo is the, the market leader, so just get Apollo. It's $99 for unlimited searches and emails and 5,000 phone numbers. There's absolutely no reason not to get it. It got a bit of a bad rep a couple of years ago for not having correct information, but I can absolutely promise you that the information that it has now is spot on. Like, I think I've had one email bounce out of about 1,000 emails, but the emails are correct on there and the phone numbers. So, um, yeah, use Apollo. If, you can't, if, like, if you're on a budget, then you're going to have to do it all manually uh, and find the email addresses, but you know who you're looking for now. Uh, and you can use just the regular LinkedIn, or you can get the free trial of Sales Navigator because you get all of this search in here. Um, I just, what I mean, my workflow is I'll use Apollo first and then I can push the list into Sales Navigator. Sales Navigator. So it just makes it um, easy. I do not want to show my Sales Navigator all my team, so I'll get out of that. But if you use Apollo, you can push. Uh, all of the results that you've searched within there into Sales Navigator, so it's saving there. And if you're using HubSpot like we do, we push it into HubSpot, and it's all uh, it's all working together. Uh, that's what we do. So um, I hope that helps with the ad creation for brands that at the moment might not be quite ready for an agency. Um, I'm not going to debate whether a freelancer free or, or an agency is better. Everyone has their own opinion. I've done both for long periods of time and I think that the agency route is by far superior. Uh, having multiple professionals working on your within your like essentially within your company or for your company or in the best interest of your company is a lot better than one person uh, that specializes in one thing and then pretends they know everything else. I'm not saying every freelancer does that but I know that I specialized in Facebook ads but I would still take on Google ads 
even though I wasn't the best at them, I could still run good. The glad campaigns I still do, uh, but that wasn't my specialty. Uh, with agencies, you don't have that issue because they work well. A good agency will have a PPC specialist, and they'll have a social media, uh, or sorry, a Facebook ad specialist, and they'll have an email marketing specialist. Separate people, and you might be paying like a little bit more. Because uh, I've seen some of the prices of freelancer quite now, which is absolutely ridiculous. So, uh, obviously, does not make financial sense at all, um, which is why we always say it needs to make financial sense. Because if freelancer is charging 10 grand, or in fact, if a freelancer is charging anything over three grand on an account that is not over uh, 50,000 a month, if they're charging anything over two or three grand, and they're just doing they just doing the media buying and copywriting and creative, obviously, like a full stack. They're not going to just be doing the, tra the traditional media buying where they get given everything. All they have to do is set up the actual framework. Um, there's absolutely no reason for them to be charging any more than any more than two grand, in my opinion, unless the budget's like fifty grand or even a hundred grand. Absolutely no way. Um, you can hire an agency, like we would, like we would take on a Facebook account, doing a hundred grand for three for three thousand, and you would have more than, way more than one person looking at the account, that's for sure. So, nothing against freelancers. Anyway, I hope that helps. Uh, if you do have any questions about anything, as always, please send me a message. Uh, LinkedIn is the best place to get me, or use the form on the website. It's well designed. Good job, Michael. I'll see you soon, guys.